In the last class, I have solved uh, a problem where the pile is installed in a sand clay layer soil system and uh, I have I determine the uh, tip resistance of the pile. Now, today I will determine the frictional resistance of the pile. So, if I take the uh, same problem. So, this was the problem. Okay. So, when I determine the tip resistance 3167 kilo Newton and now I will determine the frictional resistance. Okay. So, uh, as the k value is taken uh, is from the chart is 1 delta is 0.755 because it is a concrete pile. So, and phi value is equal to 1 here. So, now I will and here I as I mentioned that I will not consider the critical length concept because it is in the layer where in this case it is a doubtful whether this arching will really happen or not. So, now uh, what I will uh, consider that uh, so friction part. So, okay. so first uh, skin friction that first one F S 1 from 1 meter to 4 meter. One thing here when I calculate the length, I will take the 1 meter. I will, I will not take this 1 meter, I will take 3 meter because this is the 3 meter plus 7 meter plus 6, me, 6 meter, 16 meter total because this 1 I will not take, but I have considered that weight when I determine the effective over volume pressure, just uh, remember that. But sometimes this pile can be above the ground level also. So, do not consider that portion of the pile which is above the ground level when you calculate the friction resistance, if, if the pile is above the ground level. So, you consider the pile which is below the ground level only during the friction calculation. Okay. So, first one is 1 to 4 meter and so the friction resistance, so this will be the average value. So, I am just taking this is the 17 and the 68. So, average of these two will be half into 17 plus 68, then k value is 1 and the delta value is tan 21.75 degree. So, that is 17 kilo Newton per meter square, okay? because your delta value is 21.75 degree. In the second uh, layer, I will do for the 4 meter to 11 meter, the average is 68 and this is uh, 131. So, second layer F S 2, it is from 4 to 11 meter and this is also average is 68 plus 131, 68, uh, oh sorry, second layer is in clay. So, we will consider this is in the clay. So, that is that formula we will not use. So, in the second layer, so we will not use this formula because it is in the clay. So, in the second layer, it will be your that alpha C u. So, alpha value is because it is in this clay layer, so alpha value is 1, C u is 20. So, we will consider this is 1 into 20. So, this will be 20 kilo Newton per meter square, but the third layer that will from 11 meter to 17 meter. So, that is also in the sand. So, here I will take the average. So, here it is here 131 is 11 meter and 191 as 17 meter. So, I will take the average of these two. So, this will be half. 131 plus 191, then k value is equal to 2 and delta is 30 degree. So, k value is 2 and delta is 10, 30 degree. So, this thing is coming out to be 186 kilo Newton per meter square. So, the total uh, Fs uh, Q A uh, Q F is the pi uh, pi d d is 0.4 meter and the length of the first layer is 4 minus 1 that is 3 meter into this 
17, then plus the length of this layer is 11 minus 4 into 20 plus the length of this layer is 17 minus 11 into 186. Okay. So, this is equal to 1642 kilo Newton. So, my q u will be q p u plus q f which is equal to q p u p u is 1367. So, I uh, sorry 3167. So, this is 3167 plus the friction was 1642. Okay. So, that is equal to 4809 kilo Newton. So, Q allowable or Q safe will be 4809 divided by 2.5. So, this is equal to 1924 kilo Newton. So, the load carrying capacity of this pile is 1924 kilo Newton. So, uh, with this uh, I am uh, just going to the next part which is the load carrying capacity of a under rim pile. So, till now I have discussed about the load carrying capacity of the pile where your uh, diameter of the pile is uniform throughout the throughout the length of the pile. Okay, it is a circular uh, piles uh, mostly solved. So, where the, where the diameter throughout the length is uniform. Now, in as I mentioned in some cases, so we will go for the under rim pile also and I, mean, I have mentioned that for the expansive soil or clay soil we will go for the under rim pile. So, how I will calculate the bearing capacity of a under rim pile in clay? Under rim pile means where we are providing bulbs. Okay? So, these are the bulbs. So, this can be single bulb, this can be multi bulb also. So, how I will calculate the load carrying capacity? So, now if your first case, there are three cases that I will discuss. This is case 1. Okay. So, this is the where the your diameter is not uniform. There is a bulb whose diameter is D 1 and the sap diameter. This is the sap diameter which is D and this is the bulb diameter. This D 1. This enlarged bulb will also increase the bearing capacity because it is your tip bearing capacity will will increase. So, now if it is in the clay then first case when the bulb is slightly above the base because in this case you can see when the bulb is slightly above the tip then a b that is equal to the area of the bulb. So, I then this small portion have to uh, neglect because in that case your tip resistance will be on this bulb. Okay? So, I will neglect that tip resistance for the small portion. So, I will consider the total bulb diameter as the a b area of the base and the bulb and projected steam below the bulb is neglected that means this small portion is neglected. So, how will be, will be the bearing capacity for uniform case my q u is c u n c a b plus alpha c u a s this is for the uniform case. But if it is a bulb then this will be the uh, same tip resistance, but, but the area that I will use will be the bulb area. So, that means, this is the steep resistance and this in this case a b I will use pi d 1 square divided by 4 in this case okay? and n c is again equal to 9. C u is the question at this level, tip level. Then, uh, that means, this equation 9 C u pi d, d 1 square by 4 and then the alpha into C u dash, C u dash is the equation at this level and C u b is the equation as the base. Okay. If it is not homogeneous soil, if it is homogeneous soil then C u dash will be equal to C u b, but here 
it is the general form we are giving this expression. So, this is the area of the S is pi d into length of the shaft. Okay. So, this is the length of the shaft that you will be equal to the length. And keep in mind one thing is that, that when you are talking about the length of the shaft and it is the enlarged bulk. So, it is recommended that it is recommended that the as the when the pile settle there is a possibility of formation of the small gap between the top of the bulb. So, that means, when the pile will settle there is a possibility that in the top of this bulb the soil there will be some separation because of these non uniform diameter because shaft diameter and this your base diameter is different. So, that is why when this when you apply the load this pile will settle. So, there is a possibility of the small separation between the pile and the this portion not this there is a small separation between the pile and the shaft. So, that is why it is recommended that in such case when you calculate take the length of the shaft you deduct the twice d of this from the shaft length. Okay. So, that means, here in pre first case if this is the shaft length, if this is the length of the shaft, then the effective length, effective length will be L minus twice d. Okay. D is the diameter of the shaft. So, that means, your A s will be pi d into L effective this is one recommendation, okay, because there may be some separation between the shaft above the bulb and the soil above the bulb. So, and then other things are remain same. Now, I will go to the next case that is my uh, case 2. So, this is case 2, but here also it is single bulb and the difference of case 1 and case 2. In the case 1 bulb was just slightly above the base, but here the bulb is is quite high from the base. So, in that case we cannot neglect this portion. Okay. So, in that case our, so here this will give you the resistance, bulb will give you the resistance as well as the shaft of this portion, this will also give the resistance, tip resistance. So, in this case my the tip resistance will be 9 C u pi d pi by 4 d square this is from the here and in the this is also another tip resistance that I am getting this is pi by 4 9 C u b d 1 square minus d square. So, this is this one okay. and, and this is the alpha C u dash into a s, a s I will consider this length of this portion. Okay. This is the L effective that I have to consider. So, this one is not considered. So, this length of the uh, this above the bulb is considered when you calculate the A s. Again when you calculate the A s L effective will be L minus twice d. Okay. This L effective will be L minus twice d. And if the soil is not homogeneous, then different position cohesion you have to use for this expression. So, when you calculate first term, then cohesion of this portion you have to use, when you are using the second term, cohesion of this portion you have to use, when you are in the friction part, then cohesion of this portion you have to use. If here it is layered soil, then, then it will be the summation of this if it is the number of layer the summation of the friction resistance that I have done for the previous cases of uniform shaft diameter. Okay. So, and the third case is that this is the third case where we are using the multiple bulb we are using the two bulbs okay. and again your uh, first I mean lower bulb is quite high from the base of the a uh, pile. Okay. So, again the resistance how, how, how we are getting the resistance. So, we will getting the resistance from here 
then you will getting the resistance from here this base. So, that means, here the first one is this one the same as pi d square by 4 into 9 C u b here C u b is u C u b is here. Then this is the second resistance steep resistance is this one the same as the uh, second case. Okay? So, this one C u b dash okay? and then we have two frictional resistance. So, what are those two frictional resistance? So, two frictional resistance this one is as usual the frictional resistance that we are getting for the shaft. So, this will be C u dash okay? and again L effective is equal to this, this will be a 2 d. Okay? This is the 2 d not b, 2 d here. So, this L effective will be L minus 2 d. So, that means, we are considering the sap resistance from the uh, shaft above the top top bulb. Okay? Here mention here. So, this is the shaft above the top bulb. Okay? So, this is we are getting an alpha value will be the adhesion factor between the soil and the pile, but that is the fourth term. So, the here also we are getting the resistance, because in between these two soil, in between the two bulb, the soil of this zone this will form a cylinder. Okay? When the pile deform, this soil will also try to deform. So, this will soil this the soil between the two bulbs will also try to deform. Okay? So, that is why they, this portion of soil or soil cylinder will give you the resistance or the frictional resistance. So, that frictional resistance will be, so this will be the C u double dash and area of this portion okay, or this cylinder, but here the alpha value is equal to 1, because here the friction resistance that you are getting here, it is between the soil and soil, because this portion is also soil and this portion is also soil. So, the soil cylinder, their alpha value will be 1, but here the addition factor alpha value will not be 1, because this is the pile material, this is the soil, that is why there will be alpha and here the alpha is not considered, because your alpha value is 1 as this is the resistance of the soil cylinder I am getting and this is the soil versus soil. So, that is why it will be the alpha and this your A s, this A s will be pi into d into L effective and this A s b will be pi into d 1 into the L 1. Okay? L 1. L 1 is the center to center distance between two bulbs, where L 1 is the center to distance between two bulb. Okay? So, this way we can calculate. So, here there will be two tip resistance and two frictional resistance. So, there is a three cases I have discussed that first case single bulb, the bulb is uh, very uh, I mean at the uh, base of the pile or just above the base of the pile and second case the bulb single bulb, bulb is quite high from the base and third case it is two bulbs case and the top uh, bottom bulb is quite high from the base. Okay? So, so that is uh, the next uh, topic that I will discuss that because I have mentioned there is a four ways we can determine the pile load capacities. One is the static formula that I have discussed for the granular soil as well as the clay soil. Next one is the pile load test. Third one is the from the your uh, driving formula for the driven piles that I will discuss and the fourth one is the from the SPT and the CPT or the cone penetration values. Okay, so, the, so the, the second um, uh, method is the pile load test. 
So, I have discussed the plate load test for the shallow foundation, it is also the similar uh, test for the pile. Okay. So, it is only the direct method to allow determine the allowable load on the piles, because the advantage of this method is that directly we can get the allowable load on the piles from this method. Okay. Other methods we are using, we are determining the uh, soil properties, those we are using in the expression and we are getting the pile load capacity, but here directly in from the test we will get the pile load capacity. Okay. So, it is an in situ test and most reliable one compared to the other methods. Okay. It is very useful for questionless soil, because all the field test or in situ test I have mentioned is useful the questionless soil or granular soil, because in the cohesion soil there is a time dependent or the long term behavior, but these tests are short term. So, it is very difficult to get that long term behavior of the uh, soil, cohesive soil in this in situ test. So, that is why it is also very reliable for the cohesionless soil, but for the cohesive soil data from the pile load test should be used with some caution, because, because in the pile diving disturbance in the pore water pressure development and inadequated time to allow for the cohesion consolidation settlement. Consolidation settlement is the time dependent settlement, but these tests are short term tests. So, we are not allowing this pile for the consolidation settlement. Another issue I have mentioned that if you are driving a pile in the soil and if it is a clay, then you are not allowing this water to dissipate. So, pore water pressure will generate and that will reduce the effective overburden pressure and your strength of the soil will reduce. So, your pile load carrying capacity will reduce because it is a short term test, you are not allowing this water to move. Okay. So, these things you have to take care when you are using the pile load test data in clay, but in the sand it is very useful. So, there are three types of pile load test can be conducted, the vertical um, pile load test, lateral pile load test and pull out pile load test or the tension, but as I mentioned all the discussion uh, about pile I am talking about only compressive load, I am not talking anything about lateral load on the lateral uh, or the tension load in this course. So, the pile load test I will discuss only for the compression. Okay. So, that means the this is carried first the compression, it is carried out to establish the load settlement relationship under compression and determine the allowable load on pile. So, we will get a load settlement curve. Uh, basically, we will apply the load, we will measure the settlement. So, we will get a load settlement curve from that load settlement curve, we will get the allowable load carrying capacity of the pile. And the lateral load and the tension load, these are conducted when it is required, okay. So, because when the pile is subjected to lateral load or the tension load, in those cases, we conduct the lateral load or the pull out test on the pile. So, that is why first I will discuss the first case. So, there are two types of tests generally conducted, one is called initial test, another is called the routine test. Okay. So, what is initial test? So, this is carried out on test pile. So, there is another term is the test pile. Okay. So, this is on the test pile and another is the working pile. So, what is the difference between test pile and working pile? The test piles are used only for the testing purpose. So, these piles will not be used in future to carry the load which is coming from the superstructure. These are used for only for the testing purpose and working piles, working piles are the piles, those piles can be used for this testing purpose and these piles will carry load in the future which is coming from the superstructure. Okay? So, this is the basic difference between test piles and the working piles. So, your initial tests are conducted on test piles and the routine tests are conducted on working piles. Okay. So, initial tests are carried out on test pile to estimate the allowable load or to predict the settlement at working load. Okay. So, it does not carry the load coming from superstructure that I have mentioned. So, the what will be the number? So, if no information is available about the soil uh, subsoil strata or no past experience. So, generally if, if for a project involving 200 piles, there should be minimum 2 initial tests. So, I mean if you are your 
required pile is 200, then you have to do, you have to con construct two test pile in the site and you have to test on those, those two piles. That is minimum requirement. You can do more. Okay. So, another one, what would be the load we can apply on the test pile? As we can, we will not use this um, test pile in the future for load carrying capacity purpose. So, we can apply, we can go up to the failure even required for this uh, test pile. But the uh, load, that means the minimum amount of load, this test pile should be applied is twice the safe load of the pile. Okay? So, how will calculate the safe load? So, we have to get the data from the site and by using the expression for the static pile formula, you can get what will be the safe load. So, you have to apply twice the safe load, that is minimum, remember that minimum, you, have, you can apply more, okay. even you can up, go up to the failure if required, because uh, these piles will never be used in future. So, but the minimum requirement is first you calculate the safe load based on the uh, static formula and then you use the twice of that safe load as your during the testing purpose, that is the minimum requirement or at which the load total load at which at, at load at which the total settlement attains a value of 10 percent of pile diameter for single pile or 40 per, 40 millimeter group pile whichever will achieve earlier. So, either uh, twice minimum is twice the safe load or if the pile settlement attains the 10 percent of diameter of the pile for single pile or 40 millimeter for group pile if you are doing the test on group pile whichever will uh, uh, reach earlier. Okay, so, next one is that uh, routine test. So, this as I mentioned routine tests are done on the working pile to assess the displacement corresponding to working load. So, the what is the minimum number of routine test uh, that should be half percentage of pile used. Okay, half percent. Suppose you are in the uh, site, there is a 200 pile. So, number of uh, routine uh, uh, working piles or test half percent of 200, that means 1. Okay. So, it may vary uh, or it may increase up to 2 percent also or depending upon the nature of soil and the importance of the structure. If your uh, structure importance is uh, very high, or the soil variability is more, then you can go up to 2 percent of the of the uh, total pile that you use in the field. And here as this pile will be used in the future, so you cannot go up to the failure. So, here it is up to 1 point times the safe load. In previously minimum, you have to go for 2 times of the safe load for the routine uh, for the test pile, but the working piles you cannot go beyond the 1.5 times of the safe load at or the load at which settlement attains 12 millimeter for single piles and 40 millimeters for group pile whichever is earlier. So, whichever is earlier. So, if this condition is satisfied you have to go up to that. Okay. So, the process uh, there are two types of uh, pile load test even in compressive uh, pile one is the continuous loading, another is the cyclic loading. So, I will discuss uh, what is continuous loading. Continuous means you will continuously increase the load and uh, first you are putting one load, then getting the deformation, then you increase the load, getting that you will, you will note down the deformation and it will it, it, it will be continuous one. Okay. So, always loading, but in that cyclic one, so, you first load it, then again unload it fully, then again load it, then again unload it. So, it is a cyclic uh, pattern. So, that means the continuous one, your load settlement plot would be if it is load and this is settlement, then you plot may be something like this. This is always loading, continuous one. But for the cyclic, your load settlement plot. will be. So, this is the loading, then unloading, then again loading, then unloading. So, again loading, unloading, again loading like this. 
Okay, so, this is the cyclic because loading unloading. So, what is the purpose of these two tests? So, this continuous test I will get the allowable load carrying capacity of the pile. So, from this test I will not get what is the contribution of the tip resistance, what is the contribution of the fixer resistance separately. But from the cyclic pile load test I will get separately what is the contribution of the tip resistance and what is the contribution of the friction resistance. Okay? So, this tip contribution and the friction contribution both I will get from this cyclic load test. Okay? So, um, first the uh, procedure of the pile load test that test can be carried out by uh, applying the load on a RCC cap over the pile. So, we have a pile then there will be a pile cap over the top of the pile on that pile cap we will apply the load. The load will be applied by this reaction frame you can see these frames these are anchored into the soil. So, we are putting the reaction through hydraulic jack to this frame. This frame is giving the reaction and that is applied as a load on the pile and the settlement at least three uh, say dial gauge are these are the dial gauge. So, these three dial gauge are placed in on the pile. So, we have to take the reading of three dial gauge the um, uh, average of this three, three dial gauge will be reading will be treated as a settlement and we apply the load. Then how we apply the load? The load will be applied in the like the um, your plate load test that one fifth of the safe load or 20 percent of the safe load. So, first you have to calculate the safe load though you increment of the load will be one fifth of that. So, first increment we apply 20 percent of that or one fifth of that next one will be the two fifth of that then the three fifth of that or the 60 percent then 80 percent 100 percent and then you have to go for minimum twice for the test pile. So, and it will go on like this. Okay? And then when you apply the first stage of loading, so uh, when I will apply the next stage, so when the your settlement of the pile is 0.1 millimeter per hour or less than that, okay, it is not more than that, then you will apply the second increment. So, first increment you wait unless the settlement change is less than or equal to 0.1 millimeter per hour, then we apply the we note down that settlement, then we apply the next increment. Okay? So, then once you get the, uh, so ultimately what we are, we are applying the load and we are getting the settlement, we are measuring the settlement. So, ultimately you will get a load settlement plot. Okay? So, that load settlement plot I will use to calculate the allowable load carrying capacity of single pile as well as the group pile. So, in the next class I will discuss how from the low settlement curve I will determine the allowable load carrying capacity of a pile based on the IS code recommendation. Thank you.